Hello and welcome to the program today. It is so good to have you along. We appreciate you giving us the opportunity to come into your home and share the Word of God with you. My name is Charles Vance. I'm along with my son-in-law, my best friend, Joe Stowers. Just appreciate him being on the show. Thank you for having me. We uh, do a bunch of stuff together. We eat lunch almost every day together. Almost every day. Uh, I'm trying to get you to eat better. Fish, that's, it's not worked yet, has it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> fish, we go to the gym together, do a little fishing together. Uh-huh. Uh, just a bunch of stuff. He's a great guy. I just really appreciate him. The ordained minister but an amazing businessman. And uh, you've seen business just simply because you have applied biblical principles to every your Every day, every day. You know, something that I learned a long time ago, and I'm sure we might get into this at some point, is the seed time and harvest factor yeah. of your sowing. You know, I prayed and asked the Lord years ago. I said, make me a spiritual businessman. Help me to understand the principles of giving and receiving. Just like a farmer would sow a seed and reap a harvest, help me to be specific with my giving. I prayed this when I was a very young man before I ever got into business. And uh, <clears throat> the Lord has really opened my eyes to a lot of things that I can do myself to sow into my own future sure. and so what I personally have done is is I'll sow a seed like if I have something I need I'll sow the seed I'll write down what I what I'm believing God for and I'll keep it somewhere where I'll see it often on my desk on my computer or maybe in my checkbook and it reminds me what I'm believing God for but I've sowed for that specific thing so I'll tell you an example I don't want to take up the whole program no, telling examples but uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know Jesus said that if you give up something for his kingdom that you'd receive in this life a hundred times as much mm -hmm and then eternal life and the next one to come. So I take Jesus at his word. I don't think he said things accidentally. No. So I remember one time I needed some money for some taxes. I needed about, I think, $8,000 for taxes. And I wanted to go take uh, a vacation. I needed about $4,000 to take a vacation. That's $12,000. Pretty good sum. That's a pretty good sum of money. <laughs> yeah. And so what I did was, and we were trying to plan the vacation out. We were having to do it pretty soon, but I didn't have the money right then. So I said, well, what's one one hundredth of 12,000? So that's $120. So I wrote out a check for $120. You really take this stuff literal. Though. Literally. That's because it works. I wrote out a check for $120, <laughs> and I, I gave it in the offering, and I wrote in my checkbook, God, I thank you for $8,000 to pay my taxes and $4,000 to go on vacation. And uh, I told Cindy, my wife, I said, uh, I said, I want you to agree with me on this, and I'm believing it's going to happen in the next two weeks. That's a, that's a lot of guts just to say that. It's wild. And I don't want to tell you all the details, but God worked several miracles over the next two weeks that in exactly two weeks, maybe a couple days early, sometimes, some people say God's never early. Sometimes he is yeah, early. He is. But he gave me $12,000. And you could not convince me that that was a coincidence. Because I works. didn't have it till I sowed the seed and I believe God for the harvest. Yeah. So the choices that you're making, we're talking about success being a choice this week yeah. or this month. Uh, the choices that you're making make are making a difference in your life. Yes, one of those choices, we talked about this in the last program about getting wisdom. One of the choices that I made that got me to that point was to read the Bible and study it so much and get my faith in it so much that I believed that that would work. Yeah, oh, of course. You have to believe it. All things are possible, Mark 9, 23, to him that believeth, not just because God has them there for us. Right. Because we, we talked earlier this month on how that God's got all kinds of stuff for us. I mean, he's got uh, uh, health, salvation, the new birth. He's got riches, mm -hmm. uh, wealth, material wealth. Right, for that belongs us. to Peace, us. Peace, joy. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, but we are the people that access that. Uh, God has given us a free will. Well, I, I'm gonna go back to this verse. And that faith comes by, by hearing. Hearing and hearing, what right. we repeatedly expose ourselves to. So Deuteronomy uh, chapter, we did this a couple weeks ago, Deuteronomy chapter 30, the children of Israel, the second generation, was getting ready to cross into the promised land. The first generation messed this up so bad that the psalmist said that they limited the Holy One of Israel by saying, can God really do what he said he would do? Mm -hmm. That's what they basically said. That's they crazy. said, can God furnish us a table in the wilderness? <clears throat> The answer to that is yes, but not if you don't believe him. But, you know, as crazy as that sounds, people do that today. Oh, I know they, they say, do. well, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I know the Bible says that's possible, but yeah. I'm in stage four you cancer. You negated it. But that's exactly right. And you negate your faith when you do that as well. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, well, I wish I could have faith in that. I remember 
there was a guy that you know, if I'd mention his name, I won't do that right now, but his, his stepfather was just a drunk. He was such a bad drunk that the bar that he attended on a regular basis would call the family and say, he's passed out, you need to come and get him. And I remember him saying one day, I wish I could believe like you all believe. Mm -hmm. well, what are you filling yourself up with? Because what you believe is what you're going to be listening to all of the time. That's a law. It's a kingdom principle. It's a regulator. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. If you want God's results, the word of God. If you want world results, listen to the world talk all the time. That was one of the biggest revelations that I ever had is that I control my own faith level. Yeah. Uh, and I don't just pray and ask God for faith. If I pray and ask God for faith, he'll, he'll give me an opportunity to build my faith. Of course. You know, uh, uh, I'm in mortgages. You mentioned that earlier. I've been in mortgages now for 22 years. And uh, whenever the market crashed, the, the subprime market crashed, the housing market went down, I started going in the hole about $1,000 a month. And it didn't take me long to get worried. Mm -hmm. And uh, business just wasn't coming in like it was before because of the financial situation the country was in. And uh, uh, the Lord spoke something to me one day. I was crying out to God and asking God to come through and provide money for me. And he spoke something to me that at first insulted me. He said, you don't have a money problem. You have a faith problem. And I said, well, I don't have enough money and that seems to be a problem. <laughs> and uh, I said, God, what do I do about it? What do I do? And he said, you need to quit watching the news, all the negativity. Mm -hmm. He said, for the next two weeks, I don't want you to watch a movie. I love to watch movies. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to watch a TV show. All I want you to do is fill yourself up with my promises. And so there was a minister that had preached a message on, on financial blessings. I watched it every day. There was a book that I had that had a bunch of scripture where God promises to bless us financially. And I read the Bible every day, every free moment I had that's what I did for the next two weeks and I'm here to tell you within two weeks God completely changed my business I remember I was I had one particular deal it was a commercial deal and uh, that thing closed and within probably a, a month I made twenty thousand dollars in a month and uh, and it, I never looked back and mm -hmm. I was never in the red again after that I was always in the black and you can't convince me that that was a coincidence no certainly not not especially since it kept going right because uh, I, I fixed the real problem which was my faith problem sure and and I've got a friend we've got a friend of ours that says you have a wisdom problem well mm -hmm. that's the ability to use the knowledge that you gain and the knowledge that you gain through the Word of God increased your faith but it also increased your wisdom right the ability to use that knowledge in a proper way in a godly manner here, here's something that, well, and let me read this real quick, because these people are getting ready to cross into the promised land, the second generation, and God said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set, God said, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed will live. I don't think we see know how important it is that we're not just affecting us with our decisions. Right. We're affecting people that are around us. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're affecting our family, our yeah. kids. So I believe it's Psalm chapter 37 that uh, was where David said, I've, 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 uh, I'm old and I was once was young and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their yeah. seed begging bread, which means my kids will never beg for bread. They'll always be blessed. But if you read in the couple scriptures above that, he tells why. He says because they're generous and they lend freely. Mm -hmm. Now those people will never have lack. Right. And so the seeds I'm sowing of generosity to other people, my kids will never have lack. The negative side of that is Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He said, because you've rejected my word, I'll reject your children. Mm -hmm. And it's not God sitting and saying, huh, I'm mad at you, so I'm going to reject your children. The, the, what happened was they rejected the word of God and the next generation didn't get the word of God. Yeah. So it's a seed going to harvest. It's yeah. a seed coming to fruition. And you can reject the word every day. People know what it says. Yeah. They just don't do what it says. Church you reject people. it when you, oh yeah. Church people. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people in the world, you can't hardly blame them because they don't know. I mean, they have access to it like we do, but church people reject the word of God. Yeah. The, I'm convinced that one decision that we make will make the base uh, the foundation for the next decision that we make. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we seen people tell lies that they get themselves in a place where they think they have to tell the next lie? Yeah, to cover up the last lie. Yeah, and then you have to keep doing that. Well, what happens if we turn that around and start speaking the truth mm. and start piling truth on top of truth? 
every time we make another decision, it piles another level of truth on top of that, another mm -hmm. level of God's promises, another level of his wisdom and his goodness. Those things are going to start producing fruit in our life at some point. So we've, we've got to get to a place that we are so convinced that God's word is truth uh, and that it will work for us that we begin to speak it. And, and a lot of this stuff comes out automatically. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said that when you sow a seed, he said uh, there's a process in the seed, that you, you sow it, you water it, you protect it. He said it begins to grow up of herself, the King James Version says, but the Greek says automatically. Mm -hmm. So if you get it in the right environment, we need to be a good environment for God's Word. Yes. Um, Jesus talked about seed in Mark chapter 4, and he called the Word of God seed, uh, the Word of the Kingdom, in another area of Scripture. And who speaks where he the Word about. of God? We, we do. do. So we speak the Word of God. He said it's like a seed getting sown in our heart or our spirit man. He said we protect it, guard it. He said it'll grow up and produce fruit, some 30, 60, sometimes 100 times much. So you're saying if all I put in me is the word of CNN, I won't reap the rewards of God? No, you get the rewards of CNN. Right. <laughs> exactly. You so, know, uh, you taught me this years ago about speaking blessings over my business and uh, getting my words in line with what God said. And God told me years ago, I remember I was helping these people refinance their house and uh, I didn't know how bad their situation was. They wanted me to help them out of a bad spot. And they said, Joe, we're actually six months down, six months behind on our second mortgage and we're gonna lose our house. And I thought to myself, well, this is impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's who in the world, I was brokering loans at that time. What other lender am I gonna to get to take a loan when they're six months behind to their current lender? No one's gonna take that. And then they said, would you pray for us? <laughs> and I thought to myself, how in the world could I even pray this? What am I gonna pray? <laughs> the Lord spoke something to me I'll never forget. Oh, he said, gosh. Joe, don't you hurt their faith. He said, they're believing I'm gonna do this. You agree with their faith. So I grabbed hands with them and I prayed. And uh, when I left there, every negative thought was in my mind. For, for two weeks, I was thinking every negative thought you could think of, but I wouldn't say one of them. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just what you think, it's what you say that determines yes. the future. And so I, it took me about two weeks to get myself really in line with their faith. And I started speaking what God said, and I'll make a long story short, they, it went down to the hour. They were gonna get foreclosed on at 4 p.m. on a Thursday, and we closed their loan at three. That's God amazing. did it. Yeah. Yes, absolute miracle. We had a guy in the hospital that was attending church with us 15 years ago. He got a, a real bad uh, brain or damage to his skull. They had to replay, put a put a plate in, take the broken things out. He was in the hospital. He looked like a mummy. You know, he's all bandaged up. He's he's got IVs going on. I go to the hospital on a on a Wednesday night. We were having church on Thursdays. I said. So what do you want me to agree with you about? And I'm thinking he's going to say, well, yeah, I'll hurry up and get healed and get out of here. He said, I want to be at church tomorrow night. <laughs> and I looked at him, and he's, he's, his head's wrapped. I mean, they like just done surgery that day. Yeah. <clears throat> Head surgery, skull surgery. He's, he's hooked up to IVs, and I went, okay, if that's what you want me to agree with you about, I'm going to agree with you about it. And, and we agreed, and when the service started the next evening, he walked in just about five minutes after service, pushing that thing that had the IV in it. Yeah, I remember that. And was in church service. That was amazing. Him. That was his faith. It wasn't my faith. Right. But I agreed with him. And he spoke it, and I spoke it in a prayer when I was praying, and we don't realize the power. What, what happens if people say, I'm, I'm never going to be able to do that? Hmm. James said you set the course that your life is going in by the words that come out of your mouth. Yeah, you know, years ago I read a book, and in that book this guy gave a principle that I really took to heart. He said that he would never say he couldn't afford something. Mm -hmm. because he didn't want to think like a poor person. So I stopped saying that. I don't say I can't afford it. Yeah. I'll say, I might say I'm choosing not to do that right now. Right. But I can afford anything in reality because God could just give me the money right now. So yeah. again, not saying the negative, only saying the positive. Sometimes you have to put a, mu a muzzle on your you mouth. You have to shut up. Yes. Yeah, just if you could sit on your mouth, just sit on your yeah. mouth and make your mouth shut up. <laughs> do whatever you need to do. I wish God would put an angel beside us and just smack us in yeah. the mouth. Every time you start to say that, bam. <laughs> it's your help a lot, yeah. I think. I've just seen so many people. I was talking to somebody not too long ago. Said, you just don't understand I'm all broken. 
Mm -hmm. uh, what are you saying? This is a Christian person. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you keep saying that, what are you going to believe about yourself? You're broken. Yeah, because you believe you more than you believe anybody. Right. God created us to believe our own words. And if, if we keep saying things that are out of alignment with God's word, we're going we're gonna to be believing things that are out of alignment with his word. Yeah. Where do you think that guy we talked about was in the hospital, I think last week on the program, that uh, was threatening to get up and beat you up because you wanted to pray for him to be He's going to have a heart transplant. He's getting ready to die. Yeah. Where, where do you think he got the idea that it wasn't God's will to heal him? From church. I would believe that. Yeah, his that's church. He told me his church didn't believe in that. Yeah. They didn't get that from the Bible. No. But that's what they told him, and that's what he believed. So if you keep hearing something, mm -hmm. that's where your faith level is. That's where your faith is. You know, everybody, there's so many people in the Bible. You remember Naaman? The, the, uh, the leper? No. Naaman in the Old Testament, the oh. guy that came to... Uh, the prophet. They had raided Israel, had a, a, an Israeli maid, a little girl, and he develops leprosy. And uh, he, his, uh, the maid said to the wife, said, you know, if he was in Israel, there's a prophet over there that can heal him. And he, he, she tells him her husband, he goes to the king, their king writes a letter to the king of Israel and says, I've sent my guy down to be healed. Well, the king of Israel gets mad at him and said, you're just trying to start another war with us. Yeah. And, and he got word, somebody got word to the prophet and said there was somebody here that was actually looking for you that went to the king. And, and Naaman came to the door and uh, the prophet wouldn't even go outside. Uh, mm -hmm. He just told him, he said, go dip in that river down there. Seven times he told him, you go dip in the Jordan River. And they came out and told him and, and he got mad just about like this guy that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. He said, there's a lot of rivers that I know of that are cleaner. The Jordan's filthy. He mm -hmm. said, I don't want to go dip in the Jordan River. And he got mad and started to go back home. And one of his men that was with him said, if he had told you to do something real big, you'd have probably done it. Mm -hmm. He said, why don't you just do what he said he'd do? You know he's got the power to heal if you pay attention to him. Mm -hmm. So he went, how, man, I'm just thinking how close you are so many times one decision away from yeah. life and death could have walked away from it blessing and cursing he mm -hmm. could have walked away from it but just because of that little bit of encouragement he went to the river and dipped the bible said the seventh time he came out that his skin was like a baby's flesh mm -hmm. just because he obeyed by faith think about those those three lepers when there was uh, when when israel had been taken captive by their enemies and they're sitting outside of the gate because they can't go in so they're outside because they're, they're contagious and everybody's starving. There's a famine going on. They're surrounded by their enemies. And one of the guys, the leper says, we're going to sit here until we die? Is that what we're going to do? Or said, now if we go inside, we're going to die with everybody else. We sit here, we're going to die because we don't have any food. Why don't we just go toward the enemy and see if the worst is going to happen, we're going to die. They'll mm -hmm. kill us. And they, they got up and started toward the enemy's camp. And the Bible said that God made a sound that was so loud that they thought that armies were coming after them. They got up and left everything that they had. And it's all sitting there. Yeah. And these three lepers walk in and think, wow. They find gold and silver. They're taking it and burying it. And they said, what are we doing? So people are starving to death. Our families are starving to death inside. Let's go tell them. Mm -hmm. And they went and told what was going on. And the famine, of course, ended and the, and the people were blessed. One decision. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, something that would seem uh, like it wouldn't even make that big of a difference. They were just hoping to save their own lives. They weren't yeah. looking to save the entire city. But that one decision saved the city. You were talking earlier about how our decisions can affect others around us. Absolutely. If, if we make bad decisions, one of three things are going to happen. Consequences, you're going to become a part of the world system, which means you're just going to be flowing with the stream, or you're going to see blessings take place. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 29 says this, For they that hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, that word fear there means to have reverence for him, they would none of my counsel, 
God's speaking, they would, none of my counsel, or they refused my counsel, my, my plan for them. They despised all of my reproof, which the Holman's Christian Standard Bible said they re rejected my correction. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way. That doesn't sound good. Every day, I believe, you eat the fruit of your own way. You do. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the prosperity of a fool, in this same area of Scripture, the prosperity of a fool will destroy him. Mm -hmm. And I used to think, you mean you give a fool a bunch of money and it destroys him? That's not what this context is. The context is what, you, what kind of decisions you make it. Yeah, the harvest that he's reaping of his own foolishness that he sowed. Yes, and it will destroy you. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing, if you make no decisions, watch this what happens. I said this earlier in this program, I think uh, a couple weeks ago, that indecision is a decision. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 says, uh, verse 1, that God quickened you who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation or our manner of life in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. He said, you start making decisions based on the world, the system that's going on. He said, all it's, it's just, it's destruction that comes. You're going to flow with the world. Whatever is, you, you, you mentioned this earlier in this program, uh, when that big market crash, housing market crash, you don't have to live in that crash mm -mm, because no. you know something different. You know who you are in Christ. You I know heard God's a, promises. I heard a minister mm -hmm. say during that time, that recession that was going on, he said he was putting gas in his car and somebody asked him, they said, you're, you're a preacher, right? He said, yes, sir. He said, uh, what do you think about this recession? He said, I've chosen not to participate. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> what we've got to do. So if we, if we do participate, and most people do, mm -hmm. most people base their life on what's going on on the news, like yeah. you said, uh, in the world. And we've got to be people that choose not to do that. Well, you know, it's just like whenever Isaac sowed in a famine and he reaped a harvest. Nobody else is reaping a harvest. They aren't even sowing seed because it looks too bad. Yeah. But he reaped a harvest in the middle of the most unlikely circumstances. And something God showed me a long time ago, he doesn't have to move me somewhere else for me to be blessed where I'm at. He can bless me right where I'm at. West Virginia and um, Mississippi uh, jump back and forth on the most poverty-stricken state per capita in the Union of the, the United States. We're not poor. Mm -mm. You're far from, far from poor. Very blessed. Uh, you make more money than a lot of doctors make. Um, we've got people in our fellowship of believers that come together with us. We do Bible studies here every week or week and a half, two weeks, uh, that are millionaires. Mm -hmm. uh, they live in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. They're in an environment that uh, the environment would say, you have to bow your knee to us. But they bow their knee to the Father right. and, and to the Word. They know that the Word supersedes anything that's going on in the earth, yeah. in the world system. So we have to be people that do that. The third thing is us making good choices. And if we make good choices, the Bible says, Ecclesiastes 5 and 3, that a dream comes through a multitude of business, mm -hmm. a multitude of right decisions. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 instructs us not to be slothful, which means sluggish, lazy, stupid actually is in that definition in the Greek, but to be followers or imitators of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Mm -hmm. That's stuff that we can do. That's, that means that we're going to make choices to imitate people that we see use their faith. Why do, why, does, why do people think that we have what's called the faith chapter in Hebrews chapter 11 and it mentions tons of these people from the Old Testament that didn't even have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them, that these people learned to, to live by faith and accept the promises of God and refuse to accept what was going on around them. Mm -hmm. And it worked for them. It worked. We can make a choice to do the same thing. I love you guys. We're praying for you all the time. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity. If, you're, if this program is being a blessing to you, I want to give you an opportunity to help us bless more people. Uh, you can do that by sowing a seed this month. Here's how you do that. Empowered Ministries is dedicated to reaching our world with the love of Jesus Christ. 
Your financial support is helping us extend God's grace to the multitudes and empowering us to reach the lost, heal the sick, feed the hungry, and to bring hope to the hopeless. Through Empowered Television, we're impacting nations by teaching believers to thrive in their calling and to live successful, powerful, and productive lives. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, you can help us continue to do the works of Jesus by sowing a seed this month. With your gift of any size, you'll receive our monthly partner letter. And with your gift of $41 or more, we will also include a special teaching by Pastor Charles Vance that will take your faith to another level. When you become an EMT partner, you are helping us transform lives around the world. And we believe what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Thank you so much for your gifts of support. We appreciate you. We're praying for you every day. Just believe in good things are going to take place in your life. Before I leave the air today, I want to give you an opportunity to invite Jesus into your life. He loves you, has a great plan for your life. The Bible says right now is your time. Right now is the time of salvation, the day of salvation for you. You can, you can invite Jesus in. Somebody say, I'm just not quite ready. Yeah, you are. Right now is your time. I'll let you to pray with me. Don't put it off. Right now is the only time you can do anything about. So pray with me. Say this out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus into my life. I confess him as my Lord. I believe he died for my sins. And Father, you raised him from the dead. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, meant it from your heart, welcome to the family of God. We put together a Get Started packet for new Christians. It's our gift. It's free and postpaid to everybody that's prayed with us today. You can get yours by going to our website, charlesvance.org, press the New Believers tab, fill out the information. We will get that packet right back out in the mail to you. Joe, thanks for being on again to, uh, with me today. we got one more program this month. One more. <clears throat> it's going to be gonna good. Just, it's going to be good. Uh, I'd like for you to tell somebody about the broadcast. Uh, it's important. We're on at the same time. Uh, just check your uh, listing. We're on at the same time every weekday in some places, every uh, week in some places. So check your local listing and uh, tell somebody about the broadcast. Spread the word. Get us around. We were talking uh, earlier in the program about how you can build your own faith with the, what you expose yourself to and you could change somebody's faith by having them tune into this program. Absolutely. Because we're going to fill you with the word of God. It's yes. so important. You need to keep always keep in mind that God's will for you is a good will. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not bad will. It's a good will. Uh, he wants good things to take place in your life. He's already created them, made them available to you. You've got to learn to receive them by faith. And we've talked about it this week. You've got to learn to get your mouth open and say what God says. When you do, it begins setting the direction that your life is going in. Going in. We're going to be back uh, next week, maybe tomorrow on some stations. We will see you next time. Always remember, stay in the Word. You will stay empowered. Amen.